I've spent the last week taking photos with Canon's latest DSLR camera. Is it any good? Stick around and find out. Hi, Paul here from Photogenius. Now this is Canon's latest DSLR camera. If you're watching this video in the United States, this is the Canon EOS Rebel SL3. If like me, you're in Australia or in Asia, this is the EOS 200D Mark II. And if you're watching this video in Europe, this camera is known as the EOS 250D. Now I wanna begin by saying this video is not sponsored in any way. Canon Australia kindly lent me this uh, camera to test and review. All the opinions are my own and I will be giving this camera back at the end. But I do want to say a big thank you to Canon Australia for giving me the opportunity to review the camera. Currently at the time of recording this video, this is the first and only 200D Mark II in the whole of Australia. So let's begin by looking at what you get inside the box. With this particular kit, of course you get the camera body, you get the standard 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, battery, battery charger, strap, camera manual and warranty card. In fact, the only thing you don't get, which of course you're gonna need, is an SD card. Now once you've charged the battery up and popped it inside the camera, the first thing you're gonna notice is how small and light this camera is. In fact, to date, this is Canon's lightest and smallest DSLR camera and for some people that could be a real appealing factor. Now externally this camera looks just like the previous model so exactly the same layout as the SL2 or the 200D. The big differences with this camera are to be found inside the camera. Now the main difference between this camera and the previous model is the SL3 200D Mark II now features Canon's latest Digic 8 image processor. This brings with it some benefits. This camera can now shoot 4K video. The battery performance is much, much better. If you're shooting sports and you're taking continuous photos, the buffer rate has improved. Plus a really cool feature that is exclusive to this camera but will no doubt be rolled out across uh, forthcoming Canon models is this is the first camera in the EOS lineup to feature eye detection autofocus. Now turning the camera on and flipping the LCD screen around, I see that this camera uses Canon's guided uh, mode or guided display, which is particularly useful if you are a beginner, because the way this works is pretty neat. If I make some changes to the camera settings, the uh, screen updates and it gives me an indication of maybe how my picture will look or maybe how I can achieve a certain look by just by changing and playing with the different settings. Now remember, this camera is a entry level camera it is aimed at the beginner so this display is pretty neat however I'm not a beginner so what I did is I changed the display to the standard Canon display which I personally prefer and if you've used a Canon camera previously this is the display that you might find uh, more familiar but it's good to have options so I've been using this camera for the past seven days and I've been shooting mostly with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, but I also used an 18 to 200 millimeter lens just to give me a bit more range. And I borrowed this from the awesome people at Brisbane Camera Hire. I didn't use any professional lenses because in my reviews, I want you to get an idea of what you can get with a camera like this straight out of the box. Now for my first opportunity to use the new SL3, I went to a track day run by one of the local cycling clubs. Taking photos of moving subjects can sometimes be tricky, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to put the new camera to the test. So I'm down at the local cycling track, an opportunity to put this new Canon camera to the test, not only in terms of image quality, but I'm also looking to see how the autofocus performs particularly with moving subjects. So as you can see, lots of action going on here at the cycle track behind me. And what I'm trying to do today is capture an image that conveys movement and speed. So I'm using the classic sports photographer's uh, panning technique, where you actually pan the camera with the subject with a goal to try and get a nice sharp subject but a blurry background so you get that real feeling of speed and motion it's a great technique um, and so far from what i'm seeing this new camera's performing pretty well Now the 
the next day I was hosting a photography workshop at South Bank here in Brisbane and I thought this would be a good opportunity to try out the video mode on the new 200D Mark II. So day two with the new Canon camera, I'm in South Bank, Brisbane this morning. It's um, Buddha's birthday weekend, so a weekend of celebrations around Buddha's birthday. Lots of people here, lots of photo opportunities, but I thought this morning this would be a great opportunity to test out the video capabilities of this new camera. So with the camera set to the program mode, I was shooting 1080p, which is full HD, and I was really impressed with the image quality. The colors were really vibrant, and the autofocus performance was really good. Now I was using the camera handheld, which explains for the rather shaky footage. The next day I'm in Redcliffe, in fact I made a couple of visits to Redcliffe on separate days. The weather was amazing. I walked to the beach, I explored the jetty, I saw fishermen pull what I think was a puffer or blowfish out of the water which was incredible to see. I took some video, I took some photos, but also while I was there I thought it'd be fun to put this camera in the hands of a beginner. Now the Canon SL3 200D Mark II is an entry level camera aimed at the beginner. So I'm gonna put this camera in the hands of a beginner. I've chosen my dad, who's over with my mum visiting us from the UK. They're staying for a few weeks. He certainly doesn't know his way around a camera like this. So what I'm gonna to do to make it easier, I'm gonna put it in the program mode where he doesn't have to think about it. Let him just take some photos and have some fun and see how he gets on with it. So having previously only shot with a compact camera, the program mode is a great mode for beginners. I explained some of the camera basics to my dad and then off he went to take some photos. So Dad, what do you think of the camera? I think it's, it's excellent. It takes a great picture, but I, I don't really know what I'm doing. Can I keep it? Look, if you ever find yourself in Brisbane, make sure you check this place out. This is called Red Cliff. It's just outside of Brisbane. It's absolutely stunning here and the perfect place to put this new Canon camera to the test. Now my dad is no photographer, but remember this is an entry level camera. So I think it's important to see how this camera handles out of the box if you don't actually know about things like aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And the program mode is a great mode to use when you're first starting out. The next day was all about night photography. A quick play with the camera's time-lapse mode, then off to Kangaroo Point, which is one of my favorite spots in Brisbane with great views of the city across the river. Of course, a tripod is essential for nighttime photography to avoid any camera shake ruining your photo. So for that last shot, my exposure time was 30 seconds. Of course, while the shutter's open for 30 seconds, anything that moves is gonna blur. So that gives me a nice soft water surface and also gives me some movement in the sky with the clouds. I think I've got a good shot. Happy with my images, it was off to South Bank for some more fun with the time-lapse mode. Then a series of images to test how the camera handles digital noise when the ISO is increased. From 100 to 1600 ISO, the images looked great. At 3200 ISO and 6400 ISO, we can see the effects of digital noise with a lack of sharpness and detail. Pushing the ISO to 12,800 and then to the maximum of 25,600, the quality is really quite poor. As I often say, where possible, ISO, keep it low. Now I had a lot of fun taking night photos with this camera. The low light performance of the camera was really good. The image quality I was really impressed with. And when I pushed the ISO, to be fair, pretty good results comparable with other cameras in this kind of price bracket and range. But the time-lapse mode, awesome. Really easy to set up, really easy to use. And I got some great footage. Now for day five, I thought it would be fun to compare how this camera does against another camera. 
The Canon 80D is the camera that I use pretty much on a daily basis. I use it for recording all of my videos here on YouTube. I'm using it right now. Now it is an older camera. It has some better specs than this camera, but it doesn't have the newer processor that the SL3 has. So I thought it'd be fun to do some still images, do some video, compare the results. So I took both cameras down to the Brisbane Bayside. Comparing images side by side, I noticed a more vibrant image from the new SL3 on the right compared with the 80D on the left. Video quality from both cameras was very good. Here you can see how 4K video in the new Canon camera is sadly cropped. Okay, it's day six, pretty much the last day with this camera because Canon Australia do need it back. And it's an opportunity for me now to test out some of the face tracking features of this camera. Now I use the ATD to record all my videos here on YouTube because it has face tracking. And this is a great feature that tracks my face. So as I move around, it follows me and keeps my face in focus. But a feature that is in the new camera that isn't in the ATD, in fact it's exclusive currently to this camera, is eye detection. So as well as tracking the face, it looks out for the eye and focuses on the eye. Should be pretty good, let's give it a test. So with the movie mode selected you can see just how good Canon's face tracking really is. Even when I block my face with the mug, the camera's dual pixel autofocus performs really well. Now the camera's intuitive menu allows for easy changing of the settings here using the touchscreen to enable eye detection. Now this is one of the camera's key features. The camera not only tracks my face but is now detecting and focusing specifically on the eye. This is of course great for portrait photographers but particularly useful for videographers and vloggers. So it has to be said, the face tracking feature is I think really good and comparable with the ATD. The eye detection Awesome. This is something that Sony have been really good at recently, but now we're seeing it in the Canon cameras as well. And for a, an entry level camera, this is a really cool feature. And people that like doing videos are going to really embrace this and love it. So the SL3 200D Mark II or 250D, is it a good camera? Well, this is a camera that's clearly aimed at the beginner. It's not Canon's uh, cheapest entry level camera, but it's a camera that I've certainly enjoyed using over the past few days. So should you buy this camera? Well, if you're looking for a DSLR camera that can give you great images and video straight out of the box, then this could well be the camera for you. Pop it into auto mode or better still the program mode and you can get great results. But of course, as your interest in photography grows, you're probably going to want to explore the more manual functions and being able to change things like ISO, aperture and shutter speed is incredibly easy on this camera because it's laid out so well. Plus, of course, it's got the touch screen which really not just makes it easy to use but also a joy to use. Now as you've seen in this video I've taken photos on the brightest of days. We went out when it was a dull day and I also did some nighttime photography and I think that gives me a good idea of how this camera can perform under different lighting conditions. And this camera it has to be said has not just been a joy to use over the last few days but the image quality out of this camera is superb. So if you're looking for a brand new still camera this could be the camera for you. Video. Video is becoming increasingly popular. Maybe you want to do videos for YouTube. Maybe you want to do videos of your travels. Video quality, once again, is really good. The 4K is a nice addition, but the crop is not ideal. Audio quality out of the building mic is not great, but to be fair, if you're going to get into video, you really want to use an external mic and you do get a um, mic input on the side. So once again, it ticks all the boxes, really. Focusing. The face tracking was superb and I would compare it with my ATD and the eye detection was really the icing on the cake. That is a really great feature. Overall, great camera, had lots of fun with it. I think Canon onto a winner here. So I want to finish by saying a big thank you to Canon Australia for lending me this camera and giving me the opportunity to bring you this review. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget you can leave your questions and comments down below. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya.